Hi everyone and welcome back to Husky Talk. Today we have the privilege of talking to Sarah Thomas. She graduated UConn in 2004 and was a distance swimmer for UConn swimming team. Sarah just completed a record-breaking swim across the English Channel four times in a row. On top of all that, she trained for her massive event while going through chemotherapy for breast cancer. So Sarah, first off, on behalf of UCTV and pretty much all of UConn, congratulations. We're all so proud to have such an inspiring and persistent person as a UConn graduate. Thank you. Of course. Uh, that being said, you've always been a distance swimmer. Where did you get the inspiration to start this journey in your training? Oh, that is a big question. Um, <laughs> let's see, I started, so I did distance when I swam at UConn. Um, but when I moved to Denver after I graduated, I started doing open water swimming. And then it just kind of grew from there. So I started with the 10K swim and started working my way up to see how far I could go. So obviously the distance of an Olympic sized pool is nothing compared to the almost 130 miles you swam. So during your time here at UConn, were you always a distance swimmer? Like what made you realize that you wanted to do longer distances? Yeah, I have always been a distance swimmer. So at swim meets when I was at UConn, I always swam either the thousand or the mile. And um, yeah, it was never quite long enough. So when I did my first 10 K swim um, in, in a lake after I graduated, um, I was like, oh, I needed to do more than a mile. <laughs> so, you know, you don't just magically have the ability to swim 130 miles overnight. So how do you train your endurance to do such a long swim? Sure. So I have been doing like 20 mile swims or longer um, for about 10 years now. And so it's just something that you, you know, you build up your endurance over time um, and then you just really train hard. And so, yeah, I've just really worked hard at training. And because I've been a swimmer my whole life, um, I know how to train hard. And, you know, the skills I learned from swimming at a collegiate level really helped me know how to make a training program so that I can be successful at really long distances. Um, so what kind of effects did chemotherapy have on your physical and mental health? And how did that affect your training? Yeah, um, chemotherapy is rough on somebody. Um, it definitely you know, made me tired and exhausted. And even now, um, you know, it's been over a year since I've been out of chemo and I do get tired a lot more easily than I used to. Um, you know, I've recovered quite a bit and I, you know, I'm mostly back up to, you know, full steam, but you know, you can, you know, chemo will stay with me for a long time for sure. Were there any times during your training that you were scared that you bit off more than you could chew? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Um, you know, I've only been out of like active cancer treatment for about a year. Mm -hmm. And when I first started to like really rebuild my mileage um, in the water and to, you know, really start training again, it was hard. Um, you know, my muscles didn't work the same way. I was tired. I was not as fast as I used to be. And there was a lot of times along the way where I was like, eee, I don't know if I can do this anymore. <laughs> how about during the event itself? Like, how'd you even deal with like the constant changing tides? Yeah, it was um, hard. Um, I didn't have to worry too much about the tides. I have a really experienced boat captain who kind of navigated all the tidal changes for me and kind of got me going in the right direction. Um, so he was the one that had to worry about it maybe more than I did. And all I had to do is like, if he told me I needed to sprint to get through a tide, then I had to sprint. Um, and that was really hard because there was a few times where we were pretty far into the swim and he was like, okay, you have to sprint for an hour, go. Um, and that was hard. <laughs> so, you know, what helped you keep going and not give up in times like that where you had to sprint, uh, sprint for an hour? Yeah. Um, so, you know, I relied really heavily on my team. They encouraged me and, you know, really helped me to stay positive. So if I was feeling demoralized, I really looked to them for encouragement and support. And they did a really good job of, you know, saying the right things and, you know, really making me feel like I could do it, even if it didn't feel like it at the time for me. What did it feel like to finally be done and have to relax for more than 10 minutes? <laughs> yeah, it was a huge relief. Um, I remember crawling up on the beach and just thinking, oh, I'm so glad I'm on shore. <laughs> um, it was just nice to not be moving. You know, the water just constantly, like, makes you go up and down and pushes you all around. So 
it was pretty amazing just to be sitting on solid ground and um, not feeling everything moving all around you. What does this record mean for you? You know, um, it means quite a bit, actually, and it wasn't something that I expected, but I think just coming back from cancer and, you know, having been at one of the lowest points of my life a year ago, and then being able to still accomplish a huge dream and to still do great things, even, you know, suffering from what I had to go through to get here. It is, it's pretty special to know that, you know, I can't overcome things and I can still be strong and still do what I love to do. What do you want to convey to other people who are possibly going through chemotherapy or survivors themselves? You know, I think it is important just to remember to stay as positive as you can. Um, I know it's impossible in the middle of really hard things and really terrible things to always be positive. But, you know, if you still have a dream and still have a goal that you can focus on, I think that will kind of help you to overcome and to, you know, stay strong even when you feel like you can't. So are there any big events that we can expect from you in the future? You know, I don't have anything planned just yet, so we will have to wait and see. <laughs> Lastly, uh, how has UConn helped you become the athlete or even the person that you are today? Um, you know, I really loved my time swimming at this on the swim team. Um, you know, some of my best friends today are people that I was on the swim team with. And it's, you know, I've been out of college since 2004, you know, started in 2000. So you know, I've got nearly 20 years of really good friends who are, you know, big supporters who came to chemotherapy sessions with me. Um, you know, I've got, you know, a goddaughter who, you know, was one of my best friends at UConn, um, her daughter. So I just really think that, you know, the relationships that I forged when I was at school, just really had, I kept those with me my whole life. And that is pretty special. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us. Of course. And thank you all for joining us on this edition of Husky Talk. We'll see you next time.